think I heard Autumn say it. What happens in four weeks? East, autumn? Easter, Easter. Easter! So we're going to take the next four weeks on Sundays and we're going to start our Easter science curriculum. So we're going to pause our spies in the Bible. We're going to do four weeks of Easter science and then we're going to go back and finish our spies in the Bible. So today we're getting a little Easter science. Nice. So we're going to start with our verse. So this is the verse we're going to be looking at for the next four weeks. Is anybody brave enough to read it? All right, Micah and Eli, can you read it together? When anyone lives in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Excellent. So we're going to see that coming through our lessons for the next four weeks, but we want to save lots of time for our lesson today. So I'm going to introduce you to a new song for a couple minutes. While our large group gets ready. All right. Yep. And if you count to 20, we'll be right back. Start at one. in the pot you can plant yourself. That is the silliest thing I have ever heard. <laughs> Arbor Day Gnu? But that's not the holiday I was referring to. We are just a few weeks away from... Easter! That's a good holiday too. It's the day we celebrate the impossible. How can a rabbit lay eggs? No. <laughs> well, how can a rabbit... Like, how can a rabbit hide billions of eggs in just one night? Um, no, I was referring to how God saved us from our sins. Oh, that impossible thing. Yes, as you know, God is perfect. And when we sinned, we became separated from God. So, how can a perfect God pay the price for an imperfect people? It can't be done. It has been done. But that's impossible. Well, is it as impossible as... Getting this egg to go in this bottle? What? No way. No way. It doesn't work. It doesn't fit. Push it. Go smush it. I don't want to break my egg. You can eat it then. Yeah, you you think eat. that's impossible? Oh, that's definitely impossible. No. <laughs> this egg is way too big. This egg is too big. There's no way it will fit inside that bottle. Well, I will make it go inside the bottle. And I will do it upside down. No way. I told you. Yep. No way. Alright. So. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put birthday candles in our egg. I don't want a birthday egg. I want a birthday cake. Next, we light the candles. Oh. This is really not. We have that same light 
I got them. What? Candle on and down. Shall we sing happy birthday? Yeah. Happy birthday. Uh, sure. Well, we can sing happy birthday to Delia. Happy Delia, birthday. should we sing happy birthday with my birthday egg? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Delia. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Oh, we probably shouldn't work with this. No, probably not. Maybe next time. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to get Dr. R to place the mouth of the bottle on top of the egg. See you later. Wait, get wait. If you don't want to adapt with that, like, with the lamb on fire. Well, let's yeah. see. What the? What the? Alright. What? No way. I don't believe that. That is magic! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well. What? You did it! That is magic. I don't believe it. That is so crazy. Wait. That, my friend, is exactly what people said when they said Jesus couldn't defeat death by coming back to life. They said, that's impossible. It can never happen. But that's what Jesus did when he came to earth. Yeah, to open the door so that we can all have our sins forgiven and be saved from death. Precisely. Jesus did the impossible. And for that, he deserves all our praise. Just like I deserve praise for doing the impossible, right? Uh, Dr. R, you and I both know that science did that, not you. Okay, fine. Good job, science. But that doesn't compare to what Jesus did. You can say that again. Oh, fine. Good job, science. But that doesn't compare to what Jesus did. <laughs> well, let's look at the beginning of the Easter story when Jesus came to Jerusalem. Let's check out Mark chapter 11. Mark 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and he will send it back here shortly. So they went and they found a colt outside on the street, tied at a doorway. And they untied it, and some people were standing there, and they asked, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered as Jesus told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is, is the kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out, um, out to Bethany with the twelve. So, people didn't line the streets for just anyone. They didn't wave palm branches and lay down their coats for everybody that came to Jerusalem for Passover. The people knew Jesus was special. And many believed that he might be the, the Messiah, the chosen one that God had promised would save their people. And Jesus was praised as a king. But even then, the people didn't really know or understand why they should really worship Jesus. And a week later, all would be revealed. Because Jesus came to do the impossible. He came to save not just Israel, but the whole world from sin. Jesus is the only man who never sinned. And he is the only person who could have taken the punishment upon himself and died for all humankind. Absolutely. Today we want to lift our voices and praise and praise the God and praise God for doing the impossible. We want to thank him for Easter and for dying on the cross and saving us from our sin. There's no story in the Bible that is more important than the Easter story because that's the story that changes everything. That's why the Bible was written. In the beginning God made a perfect world. It was perfect. But Adam and Eve ruin perfection when they sin, and for the rest of the Old Testament, it's been a constant struggle for people to stay faithful to God. God knew there was no way as humans we could be perfect enough to pay for our own sins. No amount of good deeds or sacrifices can make up for those times that we sin and make mistakes. Adam and Eve are in heaven right now. Sure. Yeah. Well, I got those. <laughs> so 
So God sent Jesus to do the impossible. He sent Jesus to defy the laws of science by dying and rising from the grave. We praise a risen Savior, and we believe he's coming back to take us all up to paradise in heaven. And we praise God because he came to earth to do the impossible for us. Right, and we're coming up to Easter. So here's a challenge for you. So take each moment to praise God. Praise him for something in your life each and every single day. Whether it's for the sunshine, whether it's for a parent, that your mom or your dad or your grandparent or one of your siblings. Or for a good day that you had or for a friend at school or for somebody who smiled at you. Remember to praise God for one thing every single day. So as we get ready for Easter, let's remember to praise God also for what he's done for us. Jesus came to save us from our sins, so let's get our hearts ready to remember the Easter story by praising the one who saved us. Well, Dr. R, I think our Easter's off to a great start. Better tell these kids to join us next week for another science experiment on our way to Easter. Kids, you heard the doctor. Come back next week, more science, more Easter, and more reasons to praise the Lord.